What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys the Revo Pop 2 laser scanner for scanner 3D objects. And I'm actually going to be scanning my bucket hat right here. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So recently I had this sent out to me. This is by Revo Point. This is the Pop 2 scanner. And basically this is a 3D laser scanner for scanning objects and bringing them into OBJ form or point cloud form so that you can use them in your 3D projects, your games, etc. And so I took me a couple of weeks to kind of get familiar with this object, like the stuff that came with it scanned immediately. But for some of the stuff that I was personally trying to scan, it did take me a little bit to understand, you know, all the nuances and all the quirks that come along with 3D scanning. And so from my setup, basically I'm using my light box, which I already had, I think it was like a hundred bucks on Amazon. And then I also have my lighting component up there as well, because I wanted to light the front of my object here. And so the reason I'm using this is because I really wanted to control the lighting. And this is more for the texture point. If I understand right with a laser scanner here, it's using infrared. And so it doesn't really matter the light sensitivity too much because it's gonna be picking up like the depth and everything that's on your object. That's why objects that have a lot of details in there, you know, they pick up really, really good, but stuff with flat surfaces, you might have to put like tracking markers on there to get a good 3D scan. But with this scanner in particular, you can actually scan the textures, which I'll show you how to do that as well here in this tutorial. So what you're seeing right here is the Revo Pop software and this is the scanning software. So they make a Revo Pop scan and then make one that is a studio, which you can bring in either your point cloud or your mesh into to do further manipulation to your 3D model, whether it's closing holes or if you're bringing two objects together, like if you scan the top or the bottom, etc. What I'm gonna be showing here is how I scan the hat. I figured out a good way. I had my light box set up and everything as you saw when I first started the video. And now I'm just gonna show you guys the scanning process. And so what you're seeing right here is in the top right window, you're seeing the hat. This is actually the video that's playing through the 3D scanner. In the bottom right, this is showing you kind of what's picking up in the infrared sensor there. And then down here, you see we have adjustments here in which I'll go through these here in a minute. But what we first wanna do is create a new scan. So I'm gonna come up here to where it says new scan, click on this. And we have a different variety of different options here. I'm gonna use the high accuracy scan. We have several different scan modes here. I'm gonna be using feature because this hat has a lot of good, you know, tracking points on it because it has the cloth material, it has the stripes, it has the logos and it picked everything up really well. And so I'm gonna do color because I wanna bring in my textures. If you only cared about getting a mesh, you would do no color, but I'm gonna do color. So I'm gonna click okay. And now this brings us up to where we can start making our adjustments before we do our scan. So right here, I'm gonna actually, this is our exposure and this is what's gonna pull in our texture. So however our exposure looks inside this window is the quality of texture that we're gonna get. And so I don't wanna have it too overexposed and I don't wanna have it on auto because oftentimes that will kind of mess up the texturing process and give you like different highlights and dark spots where you don't really want them. So I always like to keep it manual. Plus I have controlled lighting with my light box and my other light behind the light box. And so down here, this is where we're going to see the information for our point cloud. As you can see inside of our scan window here, this is actually scanning on the fly and we're getting a pretty good pull in from my infrared scanner, but I'm actually going to move this up a couple of notches. I think about three because it's to my understanding. If you see red, that's going to bring in a better scan for you because it's actually pinging. It's all using infrared. It's not using photos or anything like that. And so the higher the red area, I think the better to scan. I'm still a noob at this stuff, so I'm still figuring this stuff out as I go, but I think this is gonna give us a good scan right here. And down here in the right-hand corner, where you see like this little color splotch, if you click on this, this will actually just show you the 3D model that you're gonna get there. And it looks like I am good to go. So I'm gonna click back on this, and then I'm gonna put this timer right here in the upper right-hand corner up to five because I'm gonna actually hand scan everything in here. Like right now, it's on the tripod, as you can see in the video, but I found the best way for me was when I was actually holding the scanner and manually going around the hat and everything because it's continuously picking up the tracking points on the fly. There is a method to where, you know, you hit your play button here, you could pause it, and then you could reposition the camera. 
But for me, I found I got optimal results when I just let everything go through in one playthrough without pausing at all. So what I'm going to do now is click the play button right here. And then I'm going to grab the 3D scanner and we're going to scan it. All right, so I got the 3D scanner here and I'm kind of looking in the top left window, just making sure everything is in a good position. If you look at the top there, it says good. That means we're in a good area. If you push in, you'll usually get excellent. But for larger objects like this, I like staying within the good area. Maybe I'll push in a little bit towards the end just to see if I could get a higher texture. But for right now, I'm really concerned about just getting the 3D model of the hat. So I'm constantly looking in the upper left hand corner and then I'm looking at my main window as well, just making sure that I'm getting everything scanned. And again, this is going to calculate afterwards. And so as I'm scanning here and you start seeing some stuff that might look like they're overlapping or it's not picking up a good scan, I will actually just keep going unless you see it really look and mess up because once it starts taking it through the point cloud and merging everything together, usually the AI will figure out a good 3D scan for you. But I'm just right now, I'm just trying to get as much data from my hat as possible in there. So as you can see, I'm actually just holding it. I'm moving it up and down slowly, just trying to make sure that I'm getting everything scanned in here. And it looks like we have some holes at the top of the hat. So I'm going to reposition my hand all the way up to the top here. Try to make sure that we get all that filled in as well. So it looks like we have a good portion of our hat scan. Maybe as it's coming around, maybe I'll push in just a tad bit right now where it says excellent. Just going to let it get some of this texture in right here, at least until we get to the Kango logo here. So I'm just going to let this revolve around for a few more moments here. And it looks like, let me push in a little bit more and we should be good to go. So now I'm going to hit the space bar and stop this. Okay, so now that we have our scan all good to go, the next steps from here, we're going to let the software work its magic and make a 3D model out of everything that we just did. So I'm back inside the software here and I'm basically going to come over here and just hit the stop button and that's going to bring up this window. It's going to say fuse the point cloud immediately. I want to turn this on and I'm just going to hit complete and I'm just going to let it work as magic. And once it's complete, you can see we actually have a really good 3D scan in here. Like I could look under, we got it on top. It looks like we have some holes that need closed right here and which the software could do. You could go back and rescan these areas if you want, but I think if I just close the holes, we should be able to patch that up with no problem without having to rescan. But it looks like we have a pretty good scan here. So the next step from here is we're going to actually merge this mesh together because right now I believe it's still inside the point cloud. Like you see how many points we have down here in the lower left hand corner. So let's actually mesh this out. And so in order to do that over here on the right hand side, I'm going to click this arrow first. And I'm going to leave the settings as is like you can put it on auto and it's going to suggest some stuff for you. But I want to fill the holes and I, I guess I'll leave it on auto because it has mesh quality at six. It's telling us it's going to denoise it by three. And I'm just going to hit X right here. And then I'm going to hit this little triangle button here and let it work its magic again, which this is actually going to build out the mesh. And for each one of these instances, whenever I'm doing an operation here, it does take a few minutes, but I'm just speeding it up for the tutorial. But it looks like our mesh is done now. And if you look at it, it actually sealed up the hole at the top here. So this is looking really, really good. Like we have the indent and everything, all the texturing inside of here. We can read, you know, Kango is very legible here. And the hat itself, like I'm really impressed with the results here. And so from here, Basically, I'm just going to hit this texture button here and then we can export it out from here. But I'm really, really impressed with how this picked up the hat and everything. So let me click on this one just to finish it out. So it looks like we're finished now. So if I actually scroll around my hat and everything, you can see this is going to be the final output that we're going to get. And to me, everything looks really good. Like it looks really impressive. And just with the mesh here, which looks really good in itself, like it picked up all the wrinkles and crevices in here. You can see all the indents of the hat and everything. You can even see like a remnant of the Kanga logo right here. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. So I'm cool with this texture, especially if it's gonna be on a character and you're 
not going to use it as like a hero item maybe it's just on his head you know something like that at that distance it looks pretty well but enough of me rambling i'm actually going to export this out and i'm going to make a new folder on my desktop and i'll just name this one kango tutorial and i'll name this one kango tutorial and come in here and just name this one kango underscore two for tutorial i think i spelled kango wrong but it's all good then down here source type i'm actually going to do an obj and i'm going to click save and i'm going to let this save out and then i'm going to bring it into cinema 4d just so you guys can kind of see how it looks inside of a real 3d application and so it looks like everything exported out successfully so now i'm inside of windows explorer as you can see i have several files here and i have cinema 4d 26 open up in the background so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take i believe it's this object that will say underscore mesh i want to take this left click and drag it into cinema I'm just going to leave my OBJ importer on by default, just everything here by default. Click OK. And down here in the lower left hand corner, you can see everything's loading up. So I'm just going to let it load up. But once it's in, this is what we have. And so it's not perfectly flat. You would have to go in here and start moving it around yourself. But before I do anything else, I'm just name this one hat and I'm going to center my axis here. So I'm going to come over here to tools, come down here to axis, axis center center of my points hit execute and it's going to make sure that my axis is at absolute zero then i'm going to come down here to coordinates I'm going to zero everything out hit h on my keyboard to center inside my viewport here and i know this looks a little bit funky here but what i'm going to actually do is all you have to do is come down to your material and again this is cinema 4d i'm going to actually turn off reflectance i'm going to come down here to viewport texture size preview and right now it's by default which is a really low resolution but i can bring it up to 4k and now everything looks good i don't know if this was an 8k texture or not i believe it was just 4 so 4k it looks good and basically you would just take your hat from here and apply it to your character you know you can rotate it around like so just kind of straighten it up or you know you could just have it in your scene Whatever you want to use it for is totally okay, but I'm really impressed with how this 3D model is. You can see it's moving a little bit slow because this model is really, really dense. If I look at the shading lines here, you can see is absolutely covered with polygons here, which is why it's so detailed. In which, you know, if we bring this into like Unreal Engine, you know, through Nanite, that will handle it really well. Or you could decimate your model and everything here as well. But this is this is pretty good i'm really impressed with what i was able to pull up here and so hopefully this gave you guys a good glimpse at the pop 2 3d scanner by reva point so hopefully you guys enjoyed this little walkthrough tutorial i took a couple of weeks before i actually wanted to put a video together because this is something that is brand new to me i've only been doing this for a few weeks i know there's communities out here that have been doing it for years i've been looking through the forums looking through the youtube channels and just kind of figuring out the best way to do 3d scanning because it's not just you know you lay something down you scan it and you're good to go there is some prep work and every object is different like i have this little guy here i have mario i've been trying to 3d scan him i could get like a good shell but sometimes the textures don't pick up as well and then you have like his little black mustache in here like it picks up the brown hair good but it's mesh dash not as well and you can see there's like a lot of specular on him as well and so there's something i did discover looking through the farms that's called like a 3d scanning spray which will help dull it down a lot so that's something i'm going to order and then try it again and then i noticed that like i have my super nintendo mini here as well which has like a lot of flat surfaces really smooth um pretty specular and everything as well and i was able to get like a good scan of this shell but again the textures didn't really pull up and it gave me some issues especially like along these little details right here and some of the stuff here in the front but i think that's going to be where experience pulls through like this is the case that comes with the pop 2 scanner and it actually comes with these tracking markers that you can place on your object that will give it a good point of reference so if you remember whenever i was going through some of those options there there was something there for markers this actually comes with a couple of markers i could place this on my nintendo and then try to scan it again see if i get a good scan but it actually comes with 
this three or it actually comes with this model here that it's a good example like if i think that my lighting isn't good or my my setup isn't good you put this down and you scan it and no matter what my situation was i was able to pick this up pretty well which lets me know that my scanner was working and so from there it was just about me manipulating the object and kind of figuring out which worked best for that scan but enough of me rambling i'm going to be doing more videos here in the future as i get better with 3d scanning but i just wanted to give you guys an honest opinion i think it's a good scanner but but again it's not just going to be point and click you're going to have to you know go in there and kind of learn what's best for you so if this helped you guys out make sure you subscribe to the channel leave me a comment down below maybe there's some stuff that you want to see me 3d scan and in fact i'll actually give this hat away free i'll put it up on gumroad for you guys to download use it for whatever you want and you know until next time stay fresh keep creating and i'll catch you guys in the next video thank you guys again i see you soon take care What up, what up? Wimbush here.